Hello, everybody. Welcome to our new show here. We have America, Europe, United. And uh, the name of the show is Spiritual Light. And we have today our friend Charles Kemp from France, Elsa Rossi from Londres, Nada Giz from Lithuania, and our special guest is Dr. Vanessa Celone. So it's it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, we will uh, make this a very smooth conversation about uh, spiritualism, spiritism. So all the talks and today's topic is in special is do we have a soul? And uh, if you, I cannot, I, I, I need to tell you if you have any any comments, if you have any suggestions, please uh, stay with us, write in the comment box, and uh, it will help us to pre get prepared. So anyway, so guys, I just uh, start a, a, a round of a presentation. And uh, we start with myself, and then we can go to Elsa, uh, Vanessa, Nadia, and, and Charles. So, Esteban Bertozzo, I'm, I'm from Brazil, but I'm living in Ireland. I'm a Spiritist volunteer here in Ireland, and uh, we are helping uh, understand the Spiritism uh, in English. So, we are trying to... to to spread the spiritism in English, and um, I hope you forgive me for my broken English. So, Elsa, can you introduce yourself, please? Thank you. you are in the mute, Elsa. You're in the mute. Elsa, you're in the mute. Open it. Open for me. Okay, now it's this. So I'm Elsa Rossi. It's a pleasure to be here, organizing together with Lithuania, Kardec Radio from the United States, Charles Kemp from the Spiritist Federation at French, and uh, uh, Stephen from. Uh, so together we can make this effort to join us. We ask you and pray for us because the intention is to bring small drops of love and understanding about life. It's a pleasure once again to be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa. Dr. Vanessa, can you introduce yourself? I know everybody knows you, but... Maybe not. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. not. <laughs> so it's good to be here, welcoming everyone together with friends from other lands. We are in each other's other lands, right? So it's good to know that there is so much spiritism out there already. We're not alone. We're not in our little corner wondering, am I the only one thinking about it? No, we're not. We have millions around the world and it's a growing number. And as much as science grows, spiritism is growing stronger and stronger than we could ever imagine. So it's a true blessing to be here, uh, kickstarting this first program, Spiritual Light May Bring Light to all of us. Thank you, my dear. Nadja, how is Lithuania? <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Nadja. I'm from Brazil as well, but I'm here in Lithuania. Uh, trying to spread the word of spiritism in the Lithuanian language so everybody can hear a little bit more about the teachings and and the science and the philosophy of uh, our spiritual guides in the spiritism. So I'm joining uh, Elsa from London, uh, Stephen from Ireland, Charles from France and Vanessa in the US, so we can spread the light to everybody around the world. Thank you for having me, and it will be a pleasure to, to 
participate in, in and answer the questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you very much. And you, Mr. Charles, so just two, we are two here against the three. So yes. that's maybe even difference. alone, no? because I'm sorry, I'm French. <laughs> I'm not Brazilian. So born in France, um, <laughs> something like uh, 60 and some years ago, and uh, engineer as a profession and uh, studying spiritism uh, and spiritualism in general since uh, the late 80s. And uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, for this uh, spiritual light, uh, small uh, videos and teaching basically the a starting from the ABC, really what are the fundamentals, what is the basics, where does all this come from? And uh, happy to be here. Thank you all uh, for this opportunity, for your participation. Thank you also all the, the, the persons who, will, who are watching on live and who will watch then uh, these videos and uh, we are here to help so if you have any questions uh, don't hesitate thank you great thank you very much thank you so uh charles uh i'm putting here your stream because you need it so and the big question to you, Charles, do we have a soul? Exactly, Stephen. So that is a, that is the subject of today. Huh? So before talking uh, about uh, where what is the soul, we, we, we really have to start uh, from this is from the beginning. Huh? Uh, there are some people in the world who believe we have a soul. Uh, these are generally uh, qualified as spiritualists in general. Uh, and there are some other peoples who do not believe that we have a soul, means uh, uh, in the dualist version, uh, vision, so, so a soul which is independent of uh, the physical body and of the, the matter as we know it. And these are called uh, the materialists. Uh, they think the soul is a product, a product of the brain. So this is a point that we will quickly that I will quickly try to just to show the main highlights because of course uh, 10 15 minutes it's not so so long does not allow to go in details but again we are here uh, to answer to your questions we are also here uh, to listen to your suggestions if you need or want any additional information it's a pleasure for us so as I told, most of the people uh, today, we have a life uh, which is quiet, uh, is comfortable. Unfortunately, since, uh, uh, let's say, March last year, it's changed a little bit. Huh? We have a big challenge in front of us, which is this COVID. And when such difficult times come, whether uh, a pandemic like this or uh, when we, for instance, lose father or mother or brother or spouse or husband or when we have some big trials, Generally, we get a call from our conscience huh? and uh, here come basic questions, basic philosophical questions, which what I'm showing here. What are we? Uh, that's the first one. Are we, do we have a soul or not? It's part of it. Huh? And then where uh, are we coming from? Huh? Have, we, have we been created together with our body or uh, did we exist before? And where are we going to? This is also a very big subject. What happens after the death? death. I will not enter in details on this one because it will be the theme of the next uh, spiritual light uh, emission. So these are really the fundamental questions that anyone is entitled to ask and for which, of course, we would like to get some answers which make sense, some convincing answers, some rational answers. And this we are what we are trying to do. So who, who are bringing these answers? Is it uh, from the academics or from the, let's say, classical science? Here I'm just putting a quote from a French uh, spiritist, Léon Denis. Huh? He, he was born 175 years ago, uh, 1st of January. So it's a commemorating year that we have this year about him. And he clearly wrote, academics, in academics, complete uncertainty still reigns on the solution of the largest problem that man has ever questioned in his time on earth. 
Most professors and teachers discard systematically from their lessons everything related to the problem of life, of its purpose and finality. He wrote this something like a uh, hundred years ago, and uh, today, uh, what is the status? Basically the same. I did not learn spiritualism in the, in the school, nor in the university or engineering school. Uh, I learned it uh, by myself, by my own uh, researches. And uh, I really would like to have uh, at least some approaches uh, in the schools about this question. Unfortunately, it's not the case yet. We are fighting for that. We are convinced and confident it will be the case one, one time. So the question is clearly, do we, have, do we have a soul or are we just biological matter governed by biochemical reactions? Yeah. Is, is the mind a product of the brain, material brain? Yeah. Or is there something independent? This is what we will investigate today. So my first step would be to show what are, in general, the people believing about this. Uh, when we take a, when we make a survey, I have here an example in Europe that I will show you now. Uh, a, a survey which has been done in Germany, but it's about the same result in whole Europe, and I think also North America or maybe some parts of the world you have more. Uh, but in Germany. Uh, it's clear the result of the survey is two-thirds of the persons believe that the life continues after the death. So basically, two-thirds of the persons are already spiritualist. So clearly, spiritualism is on the, in, in the air. It is unfortunately in the, in the academic uh, uh, and the intellectual uh, or in the university uh, area, that we find the more uh, skepticism about this. Huh? But uh, in general, the people, you see, two-thirds, uh, different form, of course, believe that life continues after the death. This means implicitly that the, there is something non-material in ourselves or a soul, huh? which survives to what we call the dead. And on the right, there is another survey which has been done in France. And it's even stronger because you see, 42 people of the 42 percent of the French people believe that we can remember from past life. So they are not only spiritualists, but also they believe in reincarnation. So clearly, these things are in the air. There is a, a, the Vox Populi is raising, uh, and stronger and stronger we get the pressure and and the dissemination of all these ideas. Albeit, as I told, there is still some uh, resistance from uh, science. And this is what we will check also a little bit later in this presentation. So now a very simple fact, very simple, straightforward fact. We, we can observe today uh, how is the life starting. As you know, you have uh, the ovule, which is uh, fe uh, fecunded by a spermatozoid. And then it gives a cell which is multiplying, uh, how to say, in, 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 the, in the mother's body. Huh? And at the beginning, you see these are uh, these uh, cells which are all identical. Huh? You have two, then four, then eight, 16, and so on. And of a sudden, uh, this is called embryogenesis. You can see that it's taking a shape in three dimensions. Some of the cells are specializing making uh, bones, the other ones, the lungs, the other ones, the brain, uh, the muscles, uh, the, all the systems that we know uh, in the human body. And at the end, after only nine months, you get uh, this type of result, uh, this wonderful baby. So how did we get from the left picture to the right pictures? I tell we because all of us, you, huh, everyone, went through this. So if we if we analyze it on a scientific point of view, you have the law of entropy. Huh? It's, it's one of the law, second law of thermodynamics, and the law of entropy is telling that uh, the natural way huh, with the time is not to go in this direction. It's to go in the opposite. You have something specialized which gets every uh, after uh, how to say the, the transformations into something which is uh, how to say not so organized. Huh? 
And uh, clearly in the in this embryogenesis, there is uh, the, the entropy. If we don't assume there is an energy coming to drive this embryogenesis, uh, the negative would be the entropy. Sorry, would be negative. So this is then contradicting uh, one of the principle of thermodynamics. So clearly, this is one very simple uh, things that everyone can observe. Science cannot explain the embryogenesis, cannot explain how this is happening, and still it is happening. So clearly here, what the, the best hypothesis is still there is an organizing model, there is an energy which is coming to drive this, otherwise it would not be possible as per the uh, known sci scientific uh, laws. Huh? And basically there is a spirit, huh, a soul, which is how to say, uh, in, linked to this uh, first cell. And this soul is then uh, giving the orientation, giving, organizing the development of these souls according to, uh, to, to, to the gender, according to uh, what we can observe now uh, better and better. But I told that there is a big resistance in the scientific uh, domain, but it's less and less. In, I will show you here several examples that uh, a lot of scientists are waking up and are making very clear and strong statements in, in the way uh, of the existence of the soul. And one of the nicest uh, uh, manifestations in this way is this one that I'm showing, Manifesto for Post-Materialist Science. You can see the website uh, address on the bottom, uh, openscience.org, and you will find it uh, quite easily. And uh, it, has, it was an initiative in 2014 from just a couple of uh, scientists, but uh, uh, today several hundreds and much more have adhered to it, adhered to this principle which are uh, uh, written in this uh, manifesto. I will just put some excerpts of it. Uh, you see, the, as an introduction, they write, we believe that the science are being constricted by dogmatism and in particular by a subservience of the philosophy of materialism. The doctrine that matter is the only reality and that the mind is nothing but the physical activity of the brain. We believe that the sciences would be more scientific if they were free to investigate the natural world in a truly open way, without the constraints of materialism and the prejudice of dogma, while adhering to the scientific methods of data collecting, hypothesis testing, and critical discussions. You see, it's very clear uh, and it fully in line with the title. Uh, they are really fighting for a post-materialist science, stating clearly that the materialist philosophy is dogmatic because, of course, a lot of scientists, uh, they say nobody has never proven that the soul exists. But what is proven as being uh, existing, there is not much investigation to do to prove that it exists. Uh, but nobody on the other way has never proven that the soul does not exist. So as long as it is not proven that it does not exist, it must be considered as a valid hypothesis to be investigated openly and truly by science as it is clearly written here. So what are these phenomena that uh, pu uh, pushed these scientists uh, for these statements? They studied the psi phenomenon, uh, where uh, meaningful uh, information can be uh, captured by the mind uh, without the use of the ordinary sense, or let's say the so-called sixth sense, uh, or other sense. They are also evidences about the possibility of mental influence at a distance uh, or uh, communication or other type of influence. And there are also more and more observed now non-local correlations between facts, between uh, feelings and so on, uh, without uh, material connection between them. Near-death experience is also a phenomenon uh, introduced, uh, let's say, recently by uh, in the 70s by Raymond Moody in his famous book, uh, Life After the Life. And uh, he, he, these experiences, which are thousands and thousands observed, are showing that there is a conscious mental activity, albeit the physical body is uh, 
uh, and in particular the brain not operating. There are out of body perceptions. So the people who is she's lying there uh, with a cardiac arrest and so on can perceive things, real things, verified things that happen somewhere else. Huh? And there are also a lot of uh, profound spiritual experiences which are so strong that generally the experiences are not the same anymore after and before. Two books just uh, which, are, which have been written on the NDEs. So you have uh, one book from Piman Lovell, Dutch uh, searcher, and his statement is, our consciousness survives the death of the physical body. So you see, very clear uh, spiritualist uh, statement. And also Eben Alexander, uh, a neurosurgeon who lived himself, suffered himself an NDE. And he clearly wrote, consciousness cannot be the product of the brain. Continuing, you have also some example in France. Uh, the France is maybe the, the, the country where there is the strongest resistance in the scientific means. Even so, some people are also fighting and showing and managing, uh, studying the NDEs uh, to, to, to show the evidences of uh, what they call uh, extra neuronal intuitive consciousness. Uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of a way to say it without using the word soul, because using the word soul, it would probably have been refused uh, as a paper or as a thesis. And continuing, uh, they are also studying some skilled research mediums, so some mediums uh, which are accepting to, to submit themselves to researchers have been observed, and they can sometimes obtain highly accurate information about deceased individuals that they have ignored totally but on which they give very accurate information, information totally unknown by, by them, and even by the people who knew this deceased person. So this is also another type of evidence that uh, the personality of the deceased person is surviving and in a certain way can communicate through some people called mediums. So uh, I'm putting some more statements huh, according to the post-materialist paradigm mind, which is particularly here the precise will and intention, can influence the state of the physical world, can operate an, in a non-local or extended fashion, which is, it is not confined to specific points in space, such as brains and bodies, nor to specific points in time, such as present. And this is clearly the point when you lose the, the will and the intention, typically the will, the intention, the free will, spontaneous will is something which is not coming from the brain. It cannot come from the physical body. This is typically one of the attributes of the soul, as it has already been demonstrated by a lot of philosophers uh, along the centuries, uh, in particular in French, in the beginning of the 19th century, this uh, famous uh, French spiritualist philosophers. Continuing. NDE in cardiac arrest suggests that the brain acts as a transceiver of mental activity, which is the mind can work through the brain, but it is not produced by it. NDEs occurring in cardiac arrest, coupled with the evidence from research mediums, further suggest the survival of consciousness following bodily death and the existence of other levels of reality that are non-physical. Another clear, very clear statement. And at the end, they write, scientists should not be afraid to investigate spirituality and spiritual experiences since they represent a central aspect of the human existence. Uh, so this manifesto for a post-materialist science is one example. There are others, you see, the Galileo Commission. They have uh, issued also a, a report uh, in uh, 2019, which is more recent. Uh, you have also the website, and there are more and more such initiatives. Here also an example of a book from Charles Tart, huh? The End of Materialist, uh, after 50, more than 50 years research on the nature of consciousness and so on, he really came to this conclusion. Huh? He is one of the founder of the field of transpersonal, which is spiritual, huh? psychology. And uh, his statement, there is a real and vitally important sense in which we are spiritual beings. Another one uh, from France, again, Philippe Guillemin. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, Physics of Consciousness, and uh, he is also, I will not read the whole uh, quote, 
he's clearly writing that it's a, it's a terrible, astounding reductionism huh, to think that the, the, the consciousness is product of the brain. Huh? There are so many, huh, uh, and he is also uh, fully believing in the free will. Huh? And uh, because otherwise, if there is no free will, we are just like machines. Uh, everything, I mean, from some initial conditions will determine all our life. And we are just, uh, how to say, following this type of reaction. So the determinism, which is uh, the belief of mainstream of science today, would simply transform us into a machine. Personally, I, I have not the feeling to be a machine. I think you as well not. And uh, I'm fully convinced, uh, and you probably as well, uh, of the reality of the free will. Even so, there are sometimes some limitations. We cannot do whatever, but in our thoughts, we are really free to think whatever we want. Um, and the intelligence itself uh, cannot be the matter of, cannot be the product of matter, where uh, intrinsically there is no intelligence. So that's another argument to show that this intelligence must have an intelligent cause, uh, which is, of course, in the soul and not in the body. Here, uh, uh, mentioning the Spiritist Medical Association, they did a virtual congress last year. It was in November. When you go to the Spiritist Medical Association uh, YouTube site, you will have all the records, huh, uh, including one from Rupert Sheldrake, huh, which also I like his very strong statements uh, to, to wake up uh, the scientists and to tell them, uh, hey, wake up, look, look around you and uh, go out of these dogmas, uh, which are uh, not scientific and which are hindering the progress. And uh, this uh, Spiritist Medical Association is promoting a spiritualist paradigm of medicine, considering that the human is a bio, socio, psycho, spiritual being, and all is integral dimensions. So as a conclusion, I took here a, a very recent uh, statement uh, from Andrew Powell that I got today, uh, Elsa. Uh, he, he's clearly writing, we are souls busy making the human journey in our small corner of the universe. And this ma makes, of course, when we think about much more sense than this idea that uh, we are just like a machine. Here, a small statement also from Alan Kardec, huh, which is uh, who gave the name to Kardec Radio, which are hosting us. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, he introduced really this, uh, as, how to say, scientific studies of uh, this question of mediumship and so on. And uh, the statement I like most in he, from him is the one you can see. Unshakable face is the only the kind that can stand face to face with reason in all human epochs. And this is clearly showing a disruption towards uh, the religious uh, systems, huh, which is more heteronomous, huh, which where you have to believe what is said or what is written or what is supposedly coming from a higher authority. And uh, in Spiritism, it's the opposite. You first you understand and only second, if you want, you believe in it. So it's a pure autonomous approach in clear disruption from these uh, heteronomous uh, systems uh, encouraged by the religions, by the king, kings, uh, emperors, and so on. So that was it for today. And uh, I will stop. I mean, it was maybe a little bit longer than I was expecting. Open the door for uh, the comments, uh, the questions, answers. And here also showing the subject that we will develop uh, next week. Huh? Uh, what if this is not the end? So it's a complement of the one of today. Thanks a lot for your time and for your attention. Thank you, Charles. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, a lot of information here. And I would like to ask to Dr. Vanessa, mm -hmm. uh, why is why we have always this conflict between oh i do have a soul or I don't have a soul or uh, soul is the same thing as spirit no so why we have always keep asking those questions mm -hmm. so interesting i remember talking to dr 
Larry Dossie at Cardiac Radio years ago, when this very manifesto came along, he was one of the ones that participated in it. And we had a whole program about it. And we discussed this. It's about, it's so interesting that God made us in such a way that we have a discovery road that we call consciousness, right? So humanity, it's clear that people are gaining expanded consciousness because it's about perception. It's about perception. It's really that sensation versus perception. How do we feel ourselves? We Many people feel themselves as bodies. But when you look at children, for example, when we are first born, it's the reverse. When we are born, we gain body awareness. We gain consciousness awareness in general. And then when we become adults, it's almost like the reverse because then you feel like you're the body and then you start realizing that there are many things that happen that can't be simply explained by physical things. There must be an corporeal part of me, which is myself per se. The body is a temporary extension that will be recycled. So it's very interesting that when Charles brings at the end the very statement that we have reason, faith, we can use our reasoning to see that an interesting journey happens when we are incarnated. We need to process this consciousness about who we are. And why haven't God created us already? Why haven't he created us already? Knowing for sure. We are souls connected to the physical body. So it's part of the, the growing process as spirits that as we expand our consciousness, we understand that it's not it. That's why now we have pioneering scientists who are proclaiming a new paradigm because the paradigm we have now is failing us. For example, if you have, let's say you're home and your heart starts beating differently and then you start feeling weird, lightheaded, etc. You go to the emergency room. You go there, they do the EKG. They do the, the, the all the other blood tests and measurements, etc. And then they say, oh, we didn't find anything. We didn't find anything. Okay, go home. Follow up with your doctor. Is that it? So is that it? Is that what you can give me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. There is no explanation. They can't explain. And then you go to a spirit center. I'll just give an example, a real example that happened to somebody I know. And then you take this person who used to be a spiritist medium into the spiritist center. And then in a well-disciplined meeting, mediumistic meeting, spirits started, you know, being rescued through that medium, etc. And then all those symptoms went away. So science does cannot give us answers. And we're talking about something that is not extreme. What about extreme cases of mental illnesses that are not necessarily characterized as mental illnesses? So this fine line between the material and the consciousness into the spiritual part of us. So it's good to see that there are scientists that are already proposing that there must be an extracorporeal mind to really command everything but how does it change and i'll add one more comment i remember talking to jim tucker at kardec radio he came to be interviewed more than three times he continues the work by dr ian stevenson on children's memories of previous lives and i remember and this is recorded it's it's in our programs it was back when we were only audio programs it's in our SoundCloud channel. And he said, I asked him, 
Okay, since you know reincarnation is a fact, it's a scientific fact, there's so many papers already showing the evidence that there is what Ian Stevenson coined as diathanatic elements, elements that cross the barrier of death and from one, one incarnation to the next, they are brought into that, even the physical body. So what do you do with it when you're sitting in front of a patient and you know that reincarnation is a fact? Does it change your approach? And the answer is, we don't go there. We don't go there. It's fascinating because it's like, okay, you know of it. What do you do with it? It's as if, it's as if I know that there is science about diabetes and we know that, you know, we need to take some measures and we say, we don't go there. We just know that high blood pressure causes diabetes and it's bad. But the doctors say, we don't go there. We just know the fact. That's where we are today. And the still hesitant, why? Working in science, we see there's a lot of prejudice. But if we go back to Kardec, the answer is simple materialism that's it yeah that's it thank you and i just want to rest right here we are reaching uruguay guys we have our friends from uruguay here ruben forward with the spiritism dissemination bringing peace and comfort to more need the hearts greetings from uruguay so see also uh a friend, Severina Klementovska. So, probably she's she's neighbor of Nadia in Lithuania. Could be, could be. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we do have one question here, guys. It's from Vanderlei. He said, how is the process of connecting a soul with babies who are generated by in vitro fertilization? Who's up to to answer that question? Well, I can start uh, answering. I think you did. But uh, Elsa, please. No, I, I was wondering: is it the same process? Because life is life. So when starting connection, the spirit, if the spirit is. Uh, uh, ready to connect your body, planet for the benefactor that are surrounded in the spirit of health to connect it to this first cell that, that divided is the same, the same, um, the same way inside the tongue's mother or in vitro because in vitro only to generate for the first, so is uh, adding in the, the, um, the mother's. Uh, won't immediately after when the cells start to divide it or, or less than that. But I'm not a doctor. Perhaps Anaja can explain better about it. Or Charles. Yeah. But it's the there's, a big, yeah. there's a big discussion about it because uh, of the fact that uh, we the cells uh, are in, in a plate, in a laboratory. But um, myself, personally, I I agree with Elsa. I think when, from the moment uh, the, the cells, uh, the spermatozoids, you know, get into the uh, ovule follicle, um, it it gets this connection of the soul, uh, of the spirit. Um, but there are some uh, we need to to have more studies about it. With uh, and of course in Brazil we have many doctors and researchers who are. Uh, digging deeper in this subject, so we soon will have more uh, information about it. Maybe Charles has uh, something to comment. Yes, uh, it's it's uh, basically the, as Elsa you you told right. The process is very similar. I mean, if there is no spirit incarnating, uh, the the how to say 
the first uh, egg, it, it, it may develop, it may multiply, but it will not take, there will not be the embryogenesis. Huh? It will not live. There will not be, a, how to say, the, 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 the life in it. And uh, so that, that's typically one of the favorite subjects of Marlene, Dr. Marlene Noble. Uh, what I just want to add uh, with regards to this is um, there are now thousands and thousands and thousands uh, papers and studies uh, published in a lot of magazines uh, for, from the medical area showing uh, which are uh, treating the science of medicine and spirituality. So it's, it's really today getting a reality. Why? Because we always say, okay, science is fine, but we need to have results. Uh, as, uh, for instance, the tools we are using to connect here is a result of science, of quantum mechanics, of uh, a lot of uh, scientific fields. But it, it's in the area of uh, medicine, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, with this presentation of the Spiritist Medical Association, they are showing now also clear results, clear correlations, clear improvements, uh, better uh, success in healing some uh, pathologies and so on. So we are getting the results, huh? not, not really in technology. It's maybe uh, more in the medical area, but the results are here, clearly. Good, good. Thank you very much. And also we do have friends here from a British American, Carol Palma. She's in, in Iowa, but originally from England. Alana Castro, our friend Alan Baldwin, is long is in London. So it's good to see. We, on on our first show, we are reaching out so many countries, making making this distance so close and um Nadja, uh, uh, just a question to pop up to my mind uh is there any difference between soul and spirit sorry you asking me yeah if you can yeah, help okay. me yeah, 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 yeah just is there any difference? Uh, well um uh, this uh, the spirit, the, the soul is the spirit incarnated in a body. So we have the spirit and we have the soul. Of course, they are, uh, uh, we can say that they are the same thing, but actually it's uh, it, the, the soul is the spirit in a body. So when we are here now, I'm not a spirit and I have my soul and I am my soul. Mm -hmm. But when I when my body dies, then my spirit may incarnate in another body, and then I'll have my soul. No? Um, so we can differentiate like this. No. Uh, so, um, if I can add something regarding uh, the expansion of the soul. Uh, there is a many cases that you can read in magazines in the in Kardec's time in before Kardec when a person is staying in one place travel his soul to another place and make comments the thing that were uh, happening there there are places where someone in Portugal travel in his spirit and help to defend a father in another place, the Antonio de Padua. So there are many cases that is related with our soul. A spirit when incarnated, we call soul, and is composed of many layers. Layers, um, actually, is an uh, ethereal body, astral body, that so many things as more material, because the spirit is only energy and the soul is semi-material that we call that is a very spirit connecting the spirit to the body that means the soul has many layers and we study in spiritism and call very spirit as well the link between a spirit 
and the body. Only to make a, a comment about that uh, before the end, that the soul, there's a many, many ways to be visible, to fund it, to help, to do so many things, even when we are sleeping, we can still work, we can still study when we are sleeping, because our, our soul never stops to doing things, connecting to our physical body, making us living sentiments, presence, see things out of the body experience that Charles explained before. So many things, we are human beings, but we have a starting point in the spiritual world as a spirit. And after that, we carry on living as a spirit still in the spiritual world. So we are only a short time in this existence. A hundred years, sixty years, whatever, but are eternal. That is great to know that so many chances, chances to be a better person is starting now. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Elsa. Thank you. I, thank the you. soul yeah. is immortal, no? It's been already spoken. So I'm sorry. Uh, just to say that since uh, Socrates and Plato, they already spoken about the immortality of the soul. So we are here to, to progress, and in our soul will progress with time. Right. When we look to the history, Ivan, yes, could you could you explain? <coughs> Sorry, Charles, carry on. Yes, when you look to the history, the materialism was mostly developed in from the 19th century, and it was a reaction against these abuses of the traditional religions, uh, against the abuses of the kings and queens and uh, emperors and so on. That was uh, the, the reaction uh, which uh, they rejected everything. And this is still, as Vanessa told a little bit from the, at the beginning, huh? Why is this, when you talk about God or soul to a scientist, he gets uncomfortable because it's, he, he never heard about it or very seldomly uh, in, in the universities and in all this. And, and that is, we can understand why there is a fear of change and uh, to, to go to something unknown and maybe also sometimes to need to admit uh, that we were wrong before, as simple as that, huh? this very well known change resistance. Because uh, before this, uh, mostly uh, the materialism was, the, the spiritualism was predominant. So materialism is coming from positivism, Auguste Comte, again in France, sorry for that, huh? and all these subsequent movements uh, which are still mainstream today. Yeah, it's so interesting when you're saying that, Charles, because nowadays we can imagine a little bit about these conflicts because nowadays for some reasons we have people, we've recently had in the United States this huge wave of discrediting, for example, science. So we can almost imagine how splitted society was at Kardec's time, religion on one side and then science. We're no longer there in those extremes. We would say since Kardec, science and religion were divorced, they were kind of remarried and they are still adapting each other to a new way, and we are, we hope it becomes mainstream. We know we, it will, but till then, we need uh, more flexibility on the side of people who become too rigid in their religious views without using the, 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 the reason faith that we know spiritism proposes. And on the scientific side, I would say somewhat, we need to open 
our minds to explore new, a new paradigm with new protocols, new everything, because we cannot study this in the same way we have been studying the physical body. Right. Yeah, that's why it's so important to have spiritualism uh, teachings in, in the university, especially in the medical school, because as doctors, we need to know uh, not just to treat the results of the of the lab results no? or the no. CT scans results. Well, we need to treat the patient itself. And, and, and because, yeah, it's a soul there, it's a spirit, it's an individual, it's, it's unique, and we need to identify other causes for the disease and not just the the blood test that is not in the normal state and it, when it's normal as you said and the person is not all right so like how can we we help this patient so spirituality in, in medicine is, is a very important part exactly because as you're saying Nadja it is we make decisions based on our beliefs so that's why um dr uh Hero Kenning from duke university he is one of the leading authorities into you know proposing that health providers embrace the patient's um religious beliefs in the sense of stimulating them to practice it to optimize their healing process. So several studies show it to them. Why? Because we make decisions made based on our belief. Many people are going to take care of their health or not based on their belief. Yeah. So if, if, we, if we split it apart, we can barely do anything. And if for the people who talk about money insurance wise, you're talking about millions and more than millions of dollars, for example, in the United States that are being drained out just because people are not considering a more complementary way of approaching who we are, that we're not only the physical body. So that's why insurance companies, even for dogs in the US, the American Kennel Club, I've, I've got to know this week, that the insurance for dogs covers alternative, even acupuncture for dogs yeah. uh, and a homeopathy for dogs. Why? Because you can certainly decrease the expenditure uh, in, in, in the investment of your health if you go that route. So I know that we're changing because it's financially more convenient, but we're not yet in terms of the, the amount of investment in science for it there is a there are lots of questions that are still not uh, being addressed because there isn't enough money being invested so scientists can and, and that's how it works yeah. you only do research if you have money to do the research but to have the money because it's so beautiful to think of all these questions but when you go to the practical part of it who is going to give you the money the government and the government is only going to give you what the people want you to study about and very likely people don't want us to spend that much money in things that they don't believe in yet mm -hmm. so, so this is where we are so that's why the templeton foundation in the u.s is making a huge difference because it's a private funding that for example, Dr. Stephen Post, he researched a whole lot we spiritists talk about without charity, there is no salvation. And he has a whole report every year talking about the research that is being done under the title, it's good to be good, how it affects our health to be good, to do good to others, to volunteer, et cetera, et cetera. But where is the funding coming from? From private companies, from foundations. So the yeah. belief of the people is leading us into further investigation or not. So, And, and dear friends, uh, we are very close, five minutes to 
close our, our time. But we still have we do have like two interesting questions here. I will pop up both questions and I would say we can make just one answer for both. <laughs> okay. So the first question is from Riley, SOS Riley. Hi Nadja. Would you say that the soul is energy more connected to the material life and spirit is our deep level? Second question from Dawn. Vanessa, what did you experience in your academic work concerning spiritism versus science? Nadia, go mm -hmm. ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, can you pop up the question again? Because the soul is uh, our energy, more connected to material life, and spirit is our deep level. Yeah, you, you could say that, um, uh, but I think the soul and the spirit are energy, and uh, that's what connected to our uh, body, which is our material, uh, our uh, terrestrial material uh, mass. Uh, it's like a mass, a mass, and that's... Um, that's the, the, the gross, the, the big, the heavy part. And the body and the soul, the, the spirit and the soul, I'm sorry, um, are energy and they connected us to this body so we can uh, express our feelings and, um, and, and follow our desires and, and have our dreams come true. So um, I could say that, yeah, yeah, your, yes to your answer. Yes, thank you, Nadia. So as Nadia is saying, soul and spirit are the, are the same. As Kardec proposed, soul is just the incarnate spirit. So it's as simple as that, right? And bringing that up, when uh, Don Sambo, who is a spiritist American friend, who used to be in Virginia, now in Chicago, right, Don? I, I think you're still in Chicago. He's asking us about our experience. I, I will summarize it. I, I never brought up, but of course people find out. And I had colleagues asking me questions about why do I believe in it? I had students asking me, but everybody was always very respectful. In 18 years at the University of Maryland, even if people knew, they never, they were very respectful. That's something that is very interesting in, in here. People don't go there, they don't confront you because they know it's not the theme of the university. And that's why I never brought up. But I remember the most intriguing one of the experiences I had there and I wanna share with you was when I was um, interviewing a dentist and a researcher, a scientist, an American scientist from Ohio. She wanted uh, to join our group and um, at 9 a.m., we went, entered the conference room. I was going to interview her. I said, hi, closed the door. She sat down, looked at me and said, I know you're a spiritist. And it was a shock to me because at 9 a.m., I was like, my brain was still like for work, right? For work, I was still like, oh, slowly warming up. And I'm like, did I hear spiritism here? Did I hear it? And then I said, what did you say? I know you're a spiritist. And I said, okay, so... And then she said, um, and I talked to your boss about it. Oh, really? And then what happened? She said, I talked to him at breakfast today and I asked him if he knows what uh, you do as a spiritist. And then he said he doesn't know what it is. And did you explain it to him what it is? Do you know what it is? And she said, yeah, I said it's like a religion. So I knew, of course, she was trying to you know, manipulate my feelings thinking that I was going to put A plus for her out of pressure. But I said, you know, I have not, nothing to hide, but I don't think I'm going to waste my, my time explaining to this lady what it is because she doesn't want to know, right? I so I looked at her. I didn't say a thing. And I said, can we start the interview? So some people will dare to blackmail us thinking that we're doing something wrong. 
That's why we are freely on the internet. We have nothing to hide. And I have several uh, colleagues from the university who are connected to my Facebook page and they see everything we do. And I have several former uh, bosses that I had at university who are there as well and their family members. And it doesn't seem to show anybody away. So I would say it's not easy. People don't want to talk about it but they respect us as long as we also respect the environment. So that's something we need to know. Though we profess these teachings, we embrace it, it's our life. I'm not gonna enter university where this is not a subject yet and talk about it. Unless we have to organize a spiritist event, which we've done in the past. We used the, the conference rooms, to the general public at the University of Maryland without any shame, and it was always successful. So it's going to take time, but we're going to get there. Good. It's wonderful, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, it's so nice. I'm, I'm very pleased. I know it's late for you, Nadja, for Charles as well. For me and Eza, we are the same time zone. Uh, and Vanessa now is in the, it is on the tea time now. So she <laughs> can have her tea. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's a, a pleasure. pleasure to be here. It doesn't yeah. matter the time. The important is to help everybody to understand the, about yeah. spirituality. And okay, and do you have any any consider, final considerations before our wrap up? Ah, uh, would you like to say thank you for the ones that are supporting us, the ones that send a prayer <laughs> for us to start this first uh, episode, and I'm really happy to contribute with my friends here for a new world and helping this new paradigm and the, the non-materialistic paradigm as well. Thank you very much all. Bless you all. Yes, I can only support. Huh? Thanks to all. Of course, we could uh, stay here talking about hours, even late in the evening. That's not a problem but uh, we have to stop let's let's people think about uh, this first step and then uh, complement it uh, next week so thanks a lot for this uh, opportunities of communicating thanks a lot for accepting us to share this type of ideas for listening us and uh, it will be a big pleasure to talk to you again uh, very soon very nice i'm also very thankful for this beautiful um, idea that came along and with the flowers, the stars, the children and magic. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. And I look forward to seeing the upcoming ones that you guys are going to do. And I know we have a topic here that is looking forward to more in that space. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, my friends. It's It was a pleasure. Let me put it here. Our next show, it's next Thursday, 11 of February. And our main topic is, what if that is not the end? What if that is not the end? So thank you very much. I hope you all stay well. And uh, I wish you all a very good night. And thank you for uh, your time and availability. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See Bye. you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.